Well, good afternoon on my behalf as well. Uh, next time, you're I need to ensure that you don't give me this opportunity to speak after PepsiCo when they got this uh, award. It makes me a bit humble. Uh, first of all, I took my privilege that I left the energy out. So I'm mostly speaking about uh, wood, uh, wood, sorry, water today. Uh, I don't have this opportunity that everybody knows uh, UPM, so very briefly about what we are doing. Oops. So once again, compared to PepsiCo, relatively small company, not too many countries and so on. At this moment, 17, 17 countries where we are producing our products. Uh, what is actually common for us, in the, not common, but we think about UPM. So it's quite old company. You can see the logo on the upper right hand side corner it was drawn actually in late 18th century. So we have been doing those products all around the world quite a long time. That's actually traditional for UPM, so paper, it was created, something invented almost 2000 years ago. Something what we are doing at this moment is actually a revision of the company. So we are heading from the traditional paper company to something else. We are coring our vision as biofor. Some examples over there, for example, biofuels. So we are coming out quite soon with wood-based biofuels, biodiesel, investment ongoing in Finland. The UPM Profi, actually it's a wood plastic composite. So we had to make a kind of new uh, way of using label waste, so actually we invented a new product. Uh, this biofor is not only about making new products and so on, but it's also this, so also we are using this more with less. I'm not sure if, if any of you were in, in Rio last summer. Actually, I wasn't there, but we just made a small calculation. So Economist, quite a famous magazine, they have been actually doing that for our paper for the last 20 years. So 90% less production waste since 1992. The same for fossil carbon emissions. Certified fiber, so the sustainable raw material from zero to 100. Now the product, the paper is eco-labeled, et cetera, et cetera. So we have been doing our part, but what we have been noticing that actually we have been lacking behind with water. It's only minus 35%. That's maybe partly because our forefathers, when they created our mills in more than 100 years ago and so on, actually there were two reasons. First, they needed trees, and the second, they needed water. It was rather self-evident for us that we had water, so we were not really thinking about what we should do with that. Is it important? But the world is changing. It's quite clear that what are the reasons behind? So water scarcity, biodiversity loss, and so on. We were speaking with Claude that I should mention something about policies. In our business, we are actually quite well regulated. At this moment, we are discussing with EU, so most of our mills are located in Europe. They have nice industrial emission directive. As part of that, there's a BAT PREF document, so best available techniques. Actually, all the techniques that can be used in our industry are described there. All the emission ranges that you can achieve are described there. In the future, those will be part of our um, uh, environmental permits, so it's quite easy. We are regulated. At the same time, there's, for example, water framework directive. That's for the lakes and rivers, so we are well regulated. It's the same in China, same in Uruguay. Maybe actually not, not that much in USA, but it's coming there as well. So what are we doing now? So first of all, in regards of water, we realized that it's lacking. So we wanted to concentrate on some of the things that are important, water being one of those. Uh, we are really engineer-minded company, so it's good to have measures, it's good to have targets. That's how you get uh, results. And how we are then doing things. So we thought that it's good to create something. So we created a water program. We divided it into four parts. First of all, the incoming water, 
So we have been using all kinds of tools. For example, in our industry, the forest certification was created 20 years ago. It's a voluntary tool about uh, sustainable forest uh, management, including social, environmental, economical rules. On environmental part, there's actually plenty of water-related things, how we are operating, buffered zones, etc., etc. In Finland, UPM actually is the biggest private forest owner. Uh, we have something like one million hectares. In part of those, we have actually 25,000 different protected areas. Most of those are springs and so on, water-related things, places. We have been using a water scarcity tool by World Business Council. That was good. It used to be easy when there was only trees and water. Now, last year, we used 4.2 million tons of recovered paper. The mills are located next to Berlin, Manchester, Paris. The water story is totally different, so we need to do something. Secondly, uh, use of water, self-evident. Uh, the thing that we have realized that, for example, now we have an investment ongoing in China. One paper machine, 390 million euros. A lot of money. Then all the things for water, small investments, they are somehow disappeared. When my colleagues at the head office, they are thinking, OK, 200,000 euros for that, they don't care, actually. We realized that we need something to raise up those small things that are actually getting good results, establish a material efficiency program. Now we are uh, combining, binding small investments from different mills, getting bigger sums. They're actually going nicely through nowadays. Easy way to get the kind of get the attention for things that needs attention. Third, wastewater treatment, self-evident for us using biological treatment plants. At this moment, uh, on the Gulf of Botnia, on the eastern side, there's our mill called Pietarsaari, Jakobstad. We are totally rebuilding that treatment plant, 30 million euros. It's good for us. At the same time, we are trying to cooperate with society. We are giving the opportunity for the city of Pietarsaari that, OK, if we are doing this, would you actually cooperate with us? When we are treating our wastewater, there's plenty of organic material. But what we need are nutrients. And there are plenty of people who are producing nutrients. So if we combine that, actually it's win-win. The thing, that, thing we did 10 years ago at UPM Rauma, also in Finland, it was really a win-win thing when we are cooperating with the society. Last and least, but not least, maybe I should say as a hydrobiologist, uh, we have been doing all kinds of studies about the water reserves and so on. Actually, tomorrow, not on, on Thursday, I will get the dream of 10 years when I started in this position. Now we have done a study on all UPM locations that what actually are the impacts. Now we can start to do things when we know what's happening in there. Very briefly, some practical examples. So yes, we are checking the water availability. Different compared to PepsiCo, so actually we are just using the natural water cycle. So we are not adding any water, we are not irrigating at all. We are just taking care that the natural water cycle continues to be there as it has been for years and years and years. This is self-evident. Of course, we are doing at the same time pumping water is energy. So that's actually quite easy to remember and to sell to our CEO and so on. It's energy when you're using water. It's money at the end of the day. Here, we're taking these water quality studies. Actually, I just mentioned this uh, Roma case. It's, you can't really see it, but the uh, right hand side, you can see that there are some colors. And now that was from 1990, 2008, not that much color. That happens when you're cooperating with the society. When you build cooperation treatment plant, when you take the nutrients from their side and the organic material from our side. So you can do it alone. And then in the end, now we are speaking about policies. We are speaking about what, 
we want to be in 2050. Some, let's say, concrete examples, how we are doing it. First of all, we are setting our goals, of course, in addition of those biofoam vision, our principles, our targets, we are part of CEO mandate, water mandate, and so on. Communication, for example, we are communicating our water-related matters. We have GRI indicators on our corporate responsibility report. All our mills are publishing EMAS reports in Europe, and then verified reports outside Europe, so that's how we are communicating to the societies how much water we are using, what we are doing. And then on product level, we have product declarations that are also verified. Give the reliable information to society, to customers, to investors, and so on. There are the policies, permit limits, clearly. Then, actually, we are a heavy believer of eco-labels. Last year, we had 5 million tons of eco-labeled paper, so we are setting our own policies that we need to achieve these goals. Technology. You can't actually, when you think about the business of ours, when the machine can be 400 million euros, you can't do changes overnight. But you actually can improve step by step. And it's our somehow goal that we are trying to keep our technology as close state to state as possible. So for example, in Waterside, we have three major investments ongoing, of which I mentioned one. Then we are, of course, monitoring the performance, having the benchmarking, and so on. That's how we are doing it. Uh, somehow, I was rather nervous to speak about PepsiCo, but I have to admit that we didn't apply for this year. Maybe after some years when we have learned more and done more. Thank you. <laughs>